Hello everyone. The title of this talk is a fast and accurate Gaussian entropy estimation algorithm for full key recovery. This work is done by Professor Adam Dean, Vince Fei, and me from Northeastern University. This talk contains three parts. First, we talk about the motivation. We review the definition of GE and explain why it is an important metric for a set channel evaluation. Next, we will talk about the state of art estimators of GE, which are the empirical GE and the GM. For estimating the full key GE, the empirical GE is too uncertain and the GM is biased. Then we explain our new GEA estimator. This estimator is based on the theoretical distribution of score vector. And we simplify the calculation using a relationship between GE and pairwise success rates. Lastly, we compare GEA with empirical GE on the empirical data. We did not compare with GM in full key case anymore since it is biased. We will show that GE gives useful confidence intervals for the GE of a 16 bytes AES full key in practical time. First, let's start with the introduction and motivation. What is guessing entropy or GE? Why it is an important metric for a set channel evaluation, and how to estimate it. When the attacker launches multiple set channel attacks using random data set with equal size Q, GE is the average of rank of the true key in these attacks. Considering this concept, given a random data set in a set channel attack, a higher GE value means more wrong keys are likely to be checked before the attacker reaching the correct key. As a result, a higher average computation cost is needed for a successful set channel attack. That is why GE is commonly used to evaluate the resistance against the side channel attack. Before our proposed GEA algorithm, GE are estimated empirically. In this case, the evaluator needs to collect a fairly large n independent data sets with equal size. Attacks n times then estimates GE by the sample mean of the correct key ranks from all these data sets. Notice that GE changes with the size Q, which is the number of traces used in one attack. Usually, more traces results in better attacks so that GE is smaller. To decide GE at a specific Q, one data set of Q do not give reliable answer. And we need to average over n data sets for each value of Q. This estimation is actually pretty good when we try to evaluate key with short length. For example, you can check the result in this figure when we estimate G empirically for one byte AES subkey. Because in this case, the ranks are computed by simply comparing score of all key candidates in a brute force way. As a result, ranks are easy to compute. And since the rank only varies in a short range, the variance of the rank is also very small. With a large number of ranks computed in a short time and a small inherent variance, we can get an empirical estimation with very narrow confidence interval for GE. However, if we want to estimate GE in the same way for a large size key, two challenges need to be solved. First one is how to calculate or estimate the rank of correct key in multi-bytes case. This problem is solved in the previous literature. More specifically, 
after the first ranking algorithm invented by uh, Nicholas Variance of Line, etc., in EuroCrypt 2013. Many follow on ranking algorithms further improve the efficiency and accuracy of the rank estimation, but still, compute the rank in a single dataset still takes some time for a multi bytes key. The second challenge is that the empirical G estimation is often too uncertain. In one of our experiments, to estimate GE of a 16 bytes AES4 key, we compute 2,000 true key ranks for each Q value, which is the number of traces for a single attack. We can see from the figure that the empirical GE only provides useful and accurate bounds in the law scale when attacks either always fail or always succeed. In these trivial cases, it is obviously that the device is safe or unsafe against the side channel attack. However, for most cases, the confidence intervals are too wide for us to render a conclusion about the safety of the device. Let us focus on the case of Q equal to 50,000. The, in the confidence interval is labeled in the red here. The confidence interval has a lower bound of 1 and upper bound of 2 to the power of 44.2. Generally, 2 to the power of 20 is considered within an attacker's computational power to enumerate the key candidates, thus pre present a realistic threat. Usually, 2 to the power of 40 is considered too big to enumerate, thus safe against the attack. This confidence interval says that GE is somewhat between 1 and 2 to the power of 44.2, including values pre representing both realistic and unrealistic attacks. Hence, the evaluator cannot tell if the target device is safe or not against such attacks. The reason of such uncertainty is that the variance of the rank is very large. The distribution of the true key rank is also highly skewed. These issues were pointed out by Daniel Martin, etc. in Asia Crypt 2016. We will illustrate this phenomenon on our experimental data later. In order to reduce the variance of empirical estimation, the evaluator needs to compute a much bigger number of ranks. However, both the collection cost and the computation cost of doing so will be prohibitive. For the collection cost, the evaluator needs to collect n times q leakage measurements for the empirical GE. Also, Computing one rank in multi bytes case still takes some effort using a state-of-art state ranking algorithm. We cannot, in practice, do this n times for very large n values. In the picture we show on the earlier slides, computing 2,000 ranks for each Q value costs roughly 9.6 hours on our workstation so it is hard to increase and much bigger. Chowdhury and PAPSQ also introduced a very fast estimation of GE called GM in chess 2017. GM is very fast by substituting the rank probabilities in GE formula with the i's largest posterior probability from one dataset. However, there are two issues with this estimator. First, such probability substitution is biased, causing GM to be a biased estimator of GE. You can check our appendix for the detailed discussion on this. And second, GM is dataset dependent. Well, theoretically, GE should be independent from specific dataset. As a result, 
GM needs to be averaged over multiple data sets to empirically eliminate such dependency. Due to this biasness, we will not compare GM with our GA in multiplies case in the experiments later. Motivated by the absence of efficient and accurate multibytes G estimation method, in this work, we proposed a new G estimation algorithm, GEA, to fill in this part. Instead of average over actual ranks, GEA algorithm provides fast and accurate G estimation based on theoretical distributions of the ranking score vectors. This idea is inspired by the theoretical multivariate Gaussian distribution discovered in the previous literature. In the next section, we will further talk about how we utilize the relationship of GE with pairwise success rates to further reduce the GE calculation from multivariate Gaussian probabilities to the sum of univariate Gaussian probabilities. This allows us to accurately estimate GE within practical computational time. Now let's look into more details and let's see the relation between a GE and pairwise success rate. Actually, GE has a linear relation with the sum of pairwise success rate. Why? Since we can write the rank of true key into the sum of one minus identity functions of score comparison between the correct key and the wrong key candidate. Where the value of the identity function is one when the true key beats the wrong key and zero otherwise. Then after taking the expectation from the outside, the identity functions are turned into pairwise success rate of the true key against the one wrong key. That is how we write GE in terms of pairwise success rate. The advantage of writing G into some of these pairwise success rate is that we do not need to compute the joint probabilities across different key pairs anymore. And the pairwise success rate itself is also extremely easy to compute. To illustrate this advantage, we first need to bring in the comparison score. As defined in a previous literature, comparison score is the difference of score between true key and one wrong key. The comparison score over one dataset is the sum of comparison score of each trace. Under the fair consumption that the comparison score of each trace is identically independently distributed, then the comparison score over one dataset will asymptotically follow a univariate Gaussian distribution. Actually, in previous works, Revine and Fay etc. have found that the whole comparison score vector involving all wrong key guesses follows a multivariate Gaussian distribution, which is a more general case. We emphasize here that each pairwise success rate involves only one dimension of that multivariate Gaussian distribution. So the relationship we discussed on the last slides allows us to calculate GE from univariate Gaussian distributions, which only requires two unknown parameters, the mean and the variance of comparison score. Then estimating G is turned into profiling the mean and the variance for all comparison scores. After going through theoretical derivation, we can write G as the sum of CDFs of univariate Gaussian distribution. In practice, we compute the sample mean and sample variance of each comparison score over the entire evaluation set. Then the GEA algorithm gives the G estimation by replacing the mean and the variance by their sample version using the same formula. As you may notice, in the new formula, Q 
Q is involved as an independent parameter, which means after profiling on the evaluation set, GA can give G estimation for any Q values. Well, empirical method requires that Q should be far less than the size of evaluation set. Until now, GA algorithm requires to compute CDFs under all other wrong key guesses. However, in the AS4 key evaluation, the size of the whole key space is too large to enumerate over. In order to solve this issue, we first break each full key candidate into one byte subkey. Next, we randomly select M samples over the key space and compute the sample version of GEA estimation upon them. In the next two slides, we will explain these two steps in detail. Consider a multi bytes full key candidate. The side channel attack can be conducted byte by byte according to the divide and conquer principle. As a result, the comparison score on the one wrong key guess equals to the sum of comparison score of its one byte subkeys. Then the mean and variance estimation of univariate Gaussian distribution on the one full key candidate becomes the sum of a single byte estimation. Since there are only 256 different distributions in the one byte case, in the first step, we profiled all one byte distribution over the evaluation dataset. Then, given any full key candidate, we can quickly compute the sample mean and the variance for the corresponding distribution. In the second step, instead of enumerating over all wrong key guesses, we create a sample set S by sampling M candidates from the key space uniformly. Then, the sampled version of GEA estimation becomes the sample mean of scaled probability over the sample set S, where the scalar is the size of full key space. GA estimates GE in a somewhat similar way as the empirical GE estimation. But GA samples over the space of scaled probabilities, while empirical GE samples over the rank space. As a result, the difference of two estimation methods in accuracy may be caused by both the number of samples collected in the fixed length of time as well as the variance of sample distribution. To illustrate uh, the advantage of GEA over empirical GE estimation, let's first compare their sample distributions. As shown in the figure, the variance of rank is much larger than the scale probability. What is more, the distribution of the former is much more skewed than the distribution of the latter make it even harder to estimate the mean of rank than scaled probability. This graph illustrates the 3 byte case as the number of bytes increases, the difference of variance and skewness grows much bigger. Also, computation of scale probabilities only involves the CDF of univariate Gaussian distribution once. Thus, it is very fast and almost constant in time when the number of bytes increases. In contrast, the empirical GE's computation cost will linear grow with the number of bytes. In the case of AES-128 full key, the computational cost is massive even with state-of-art ranking algorithms. In our work, we use FSE ranking algorithm to estimate each full key rank. And the experiment shows that the GE is seven orders of magnitude faster than empirical G estimation to reach the same accuracy for the full key. In this section, we apply both the GEA algorithm and empirical G estimation on two datasets. The first dataset is the ASCAD dataset. 
ASCAD dataset is one of the power measurements dataset that works as the benchmark for a DM-based set channel attack. We conduct a single byte G estimation on this dataset to show the accuracy of GEA estimation as well as the generality of GEA algorithm to DM-based attack. The second dataset is the SG21M containing 1 million unmasked AES power measurement collected from a SG2 board at our research lab. We conduct the full key G estimation on this dataset in order to show that GA algorithm is currently the only practical solution for full key G evaluation. In the first experiment, we used the pre-trained CN and MLP included in the same project trained by first-order mass AES power measurements with 50 maximum desynchronizations. Only the CN model is able to recover the correct key. By computing both the GE estimation as well as the empirical G estimation, we find that two estimations agree with each other in both successful and failed attacks which confirms that GEA is an unbiased estimator of GE and can be further applied for DM-based attack. We can observe that the confidence interval for our GEA is also much tighter than the confidence interval for empirical GE, even in this one-byte case. In the second experiment, we conduct a uh, traditional template attack to bre break 16 bytes last round key byte by byte based on one measurement point with highest correlation with Hamming weight label. By sampling 6 times 10 to the 7th scale probabilities for each Q value in 1.8 hours, GEA is able to provide G estimation with very narrow confidence interval where empirical method cannot. We can see that Q equal to 50,000, the GA confidence interval is now much narrower, and we can judge the safety of the device here. In conclusion, we proposed a new G estimation algorithm based on the theoretical distribution of ranking score vectors. We discovered the relationship of GE with pairwise success rate and used the sum of univariate Gaussian probabilities to estimate GE. In real implementation, we applied GEA to both traditional template attack and DM based set channel attack and give the only practical full key GE evaluation tool. Result shows that. GA is much more accurate and efficient than all current G estimations, and it can predict the GE for sizes larger than the size of experimental data sets. Yep, that is all the contents of this talk. Thank you.